Okay guys, so what we're going to learn about in this little um, review session is how do you interpret data. So if you get a data set from a test, maybe it's IQ scores, then how do I understand those scores? Um, how do I make sense of them? Because it's hard to just look at the string of numbers. Um, I really want to gain something from those numbers. So how do I, um, how do I understand what I've gotten? Um, the examples that I'm going to use in this video, we're just going to do IQ scores as our data set is what I'll, I'll just talk about them like IQ scores. So um, let's say we're going to have a string of IQ scores. Um, I can do several things to understand the data. I can use measures of central tendency, which there are three. I could use mean, median, and mode. And those are just ways for me to understand the data a little bit better. Or I can use a measure of variation, and there are two of those. I could do range or standard deviation. And in this clip, um, I am going to really try to focus on measures of variation because I think that's um, a little bit more difficult and specifically standard deviation. So I'm going to hopefully make a really complex topic a little bit more understandable, hopefully. So if you want some practice with measures of central tendency, I'll give you a number set here and you can just pause the video right now. If you want to go through this number set and find the mean, median, and mode, go ahead and pause it now. Um, find those and um, I'll put the answers up here. So if you went through and you found the mean, median, and mode, hopefully for the mean you got um, an average of 100. 0.55, or I think it was 5.4, and I rounded up. Um, your median should be 100, and your mode should be 100. When I chose this number set, I purposely chose numbers that are um, common IQ scores. So IQ usually falls, um, an average IQ score is 100. And so these all kind of fall around the average, and I'm going to use these numbers um, in the next couple of examples. So let's keep going. Okay, so if I had those numbers, like we saw previously on the screen, and I were to plot them on, this, on a graph, this is what it would look like. Um, I had fewer low scores, so if my x-axis was the IQ score, and my um, y-axis was the number of people that scored them, um, it would probably look something like this if I tested more than 11 people. Um, typically what happens with IQ is you're going to have fewer people in the, the extreme low, and then you're going to continue to have more people scoring higher and higher and higher until you get the average, which is 100. And then you're going to have it start dropping off. Fewer and fewer people start scoring higher and higher and higher scores until you get out into those big extremes like, um, you know, 150. You, that's, there's very few people scoring that far out. So your graph would kind of look like this if you plotted number of people and their IQ scores. Um, this is called a normal distribution. If it is, um, if your extremes are lower and it gets higher in the middle, so that is a normal distribution. It's called a bell curve. If something is kind of off, um, where your mean and your median and your mode are not the same, it's going to offset and it's going to cause a skew. And I'll give you an example of that. So this is where um, some scores were plotted and there was a skew. So if this was IQ, let's say um, this we're just using IQ again and we're plotting IQ and it starts to rise, we've got these lower scores and more people are scoring higher and higher and higher and we get to 100, the average, then let's say more people are scoring you know, 125, higher than the average. We have tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of people are scoring the same score, 125. That would be kind of strange. It would offset our map, or our map, our graph, that we've got so many people scoring above the mean. Um, it would create this negative direction or a negative skew. Um, the same thing would happen if it goes the other way. If we had lots of people scoring lower than the mean, it would throw it off here. Um, and so if that happened, we would want to look at our data and understand why is that happening? Why do I have so many people scoring a, you know, a, a number higher than the mean or lower than the mean? Why is this happening? But since this is typical, this is what we're going to use to talk about standard deviation. And this is, this is what we will use to understand um, measures of variation. So um, if you just want some practice and you want to um, practice your range, go ahead and 
Um, pause the video now and so find your range. So um, if you were to do the range, you would have taken the highest number, 132, and you would have subtracted 69, and you should have ended up with 63. Hopefully that wasn't too hard. But another a measure of variation is standard deviation. And standard deviation is, it's it just it sounds like a lot, but the word deviation means um, to um, go away from or um, to get off from something. If you deviate, you're going the other direction. You're, if you deviate from the rules, you're breaking the rules. You're going away from them. So we want to know, um, with standard deviation, we want to see um, how far away our data points are getting. And so we, I want to show you um, how we would plot IQ and then how we would find the standard deviation. So if we were to plot IQ, it would look something like this. We'd have our bar graphs. We have fewer people scoring low scores, you know, a 52, a 68, a 84. It starts getting higher and higher. We get to 100. We have a lot of people scoring 100. This is our mean, our median, and our mode. And then it starts to drop off as we get into those high, extreme high IQs. So that's this bell-shaped curve here. So let's say we want to understand, you know, how far away some of these are from the average. So we'll use standard deviation, and standard deviation is just a measurement tool. So if you see the numbers at the bottom, the red numbers, this is our standard deviation. It's just a tool to tell us how far away is something from the mean. How far away is this number from the mean? If it's if a 3 is very, it's very far away. If it's a 1, it's not too far away from the average. So it's just a number set to help us understand how far away our data is um, from the mean. So these are some numbers that you just will have to remember. 68, 95, 99.7. I know that's hard. Those are you just gonna maybe make a tool to remember that to help you remember it, but 68, 95, 99.7. Um, these are the number, the percentages of of how many people fall into each standard deviation. So um, it will often the a question will be phrased: How many people fall one standard deviation away from the mean? So it's just asking you how many people are how, what's the percentage of people that are just one standard deviation outside of the mean they're not that far away from the mean and that's actually always going to be on a bell-shaped curve 68 percent of people 68 percent of people so the majority of people are going to fall one standard deviation away from the mean um, it's going to keep going further out at two standard deviations that's here 95 percent of people fall two standard deviations away from the mean and then 99.7% of people fall three standard deviations away from the mean. So if you score an IQ score anywhere in here, then that would be 99.7% of people. If you're going to score below a 55 or above a 145, you are in the, the top percentages, it's just, or the bottom percentages, just a tiny, 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 tiny bit. 0.3% of people are out here. It's just a way for us to understand how far away are you from average. So um, sometimes the questions will ask, um, what percent of, percentage of people are one standard deviation above? So if you're one standard deviation above the mean, I want you to think right now before um, I say the answer, what percentage of people fall one standard deviation above the mean? So that should be 34% of people fall one standard de deviation above, because this is, this is average, and this is one standard deviation. 34% of people are going to fall into this, this area. And according to IQ, that means 34% of people are in this 100 to 115 range. So just to sum all that up, standard deviation is just a way for us to see the spread of the data set and to be able to compare how far away is one data point from the mean. If it's one standard deviation, it's not that far away from the mean. If it's two standard deviations, it's 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 getting larger. If you're if you're farther out past three standard deviations, you're in that tiny percentage out here or out here where not that many people are scoring. 
So it's just a measurement tool. It's just a way to say how far are you away from the mean or how close are you to the mean. So here's just a picture that gives you an idea of where Albert Einstein is going to fall. He's going to fall, if this was IQ scores here, he falls out here in this. This is statistically significant. If he's falling way out here, that that's a big deal. He is out in the exceptionally gifted. He's like way out there. <laughs> okay. Standard deviation also changes based on um, your data set. So when you're graphing, if you have, if, a, if your data is really, really, really close to your mean, it's going to be this taller shape here like this. If your data is more spread out, it will be this kind of like a flatter shape. But I just wanted you to see that to see that um, standard deviation, it it will change based on the data set that if it's more dispersed or closer together, but you really only need to know and understand what is standard deviation. You won't ever have to calculate it. Just what is it and what is its purpose? Um, here is another example of a bell-shaped curve where the data is closer to the mean. So we have this tall um, arch and then our second one, our data is more spread out. And so we've got this long, more kind of a flat um, hill. Okay, so I hope that that felt a little more understandable, um, and it is a really complex topic that I, I really do feel like it is complex, but um, I think that if you think of it in comparison to the mean, median, mode, and range as just a way to understand your data, um, it's just another way to interpret it, then that might help you. Um, it's just a way, This in this particular way, you would just want to be looking for how far away is your data from the mean. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. If you need um, a little bit more clarification, you can send me an email or you can come to me in class. I'm also not a math teacher, so if, um, if I can't answer your questions or it's just still not clear, we can go and um, sit with one of the stats teachers and we can um, try to make it more clear because um, I know that it can be a little complex. So anyway, I hope it helped. Um, have a great day.